Welcome to Adapt Enclus. So uh, there is certain things in Enclus that you just have to know it. There's no better way of teaching it. And that is patient safety. So we'll be talking about positioning. There's no better way to teach this. It's very raw information. I have something special. I have a surprise for you. Um, keep watching and you see the surprise. And so let's get to it. It's a bunch of information and you have to figure out which one is the right one. So a nurse is caring for a couple of patients. Diagnosis was given. Which of the following positions and description need to be questioned? Okay, so like you know how to answer such a question. We don't have to go into details, but basically we'll look at a question and then we're giving the question. So you're looking for a position that is correct a diagnosis that is correct, and then the description is fine. The patient in a supine position. So what is the definition of a supine position? Um, back lay with a small pillow under the head and for a patient who has a spinal injury, so spine injury, the position is right. Okay, back lay with a, a small pillow. First, the back lay is the appropriate. Small pillow is inappropriate for somebody with a spine injury. So for supine position, you have to lay on your back and a little bit of pillow under your head to support your head. But if you have a spine injury, you can have a pillow. You lay flat, like you said, back lay, but we shouldn't, they will take the pillow out. So the next you question this, there shouldn't be a pillow under the head. So this is one of them you will question. Two, prone. Laying on your abdomen, head facing down. An example is myelomeningocele. Um, you know these patients, they usually have a spinal neurotube defect with some fluid, nerves, and then spinal cord um, covered with the, it's just basically a sac in the sacral area. So you put a, and you lay them on the prone position. So that's appropriate, okay? But the head should not face down. You lay them on the abdomen, but the head should be facing on the side. So this one, we have to intervene. So the first portion is right, but the head is wrong. And this diagnosis is right. Side laying, so lateral side bearing weight, somebody who had a seizure. That's right. If you had a seizure, we want to have prevent aspiration. So we lay you on your side. When you lay on your side, your lateral side bear most of your body weight. So this is correct. We don't need to intervene. The totomy position, supine with knee flexed, right? Knee and hip flexed. And when we're doing vaginal exams, this patient need a vaginal exam for bleeding. Yes, this is right. So we don't need to intervene. So flexed and uh, the hip and the knee and then lay supine is what is called the totomy position. And it can use it for vaginal bleeding or rectal exam. So this patient, we don't need to intervene. Trandell and back position. So for triangular position, the head is down. So your head goes down and your feet goes up. When your head goes down, your feet has to go up. And you can use that for cord prolapse, a patient who has cord prolapse. So that is correct. I don't need to intervene. This is an example of what you can use it for. So reverse triangular back is the opposite. If the triangular back, my head go down and my feet goes up, right? In the reverse form, then my head will go up and my feet goes down. So in this one, the head and the feet both are up. So that's wrong. And then, yes, you can use it for cervical traction. So in patients who have traction, cervical traction, you can raise the head up, okay, and the feet down. So they will dangle like that. And that is the reverse trandelabit position so that they don't aspirate. And that's the right one. Head up, feet down not the head and feet up. So that is somebody we got to intervene. So the next you intervene for that patient. And then seven, these three uh, things you need to look at it carefully. Modify trandelabic. So we have trandelabic, then we have reverse of that, then, but then we can modify it. Okay, when you modify it, what the patient will do is they lay in the supine position and their leg is elevated. So the, the the head stays flat, the 
as they lay supine and the leg is elevated and you can use it for a shock patient. So if you have a patient, they give you a question with patient who is in shock, the best position is to keep them in a supine with the leg elevated. So this is right. I don't need to intervene. Those are recumbent. And this is um, used when a patient has like evisceration. They lay supine with the knee flexed, okay? It's almost like a modified trandala bed, but you don't raise the leg high. You just flex the knee so that um, it can prevent, um, what do they call it? And uh, excessive and uh, ongoing evisceration. So this patient doesn't need anything. So the patients that we need to see or intervene or question is one, two, and three. And this is how I can get you guys to remember them because if I give you those raw information, it will be confusing. But I'll give you an example, the wrong diagnosis and the, the name of it so that you can match it and you have to re um, basically listen to this lecture multiple times to figure out the right by. It's straightforward. I give you the question. So when you see the wrong aspect, you'll be able to remember the right one. That's my philosophy. So if you know the wrong one, when you see the right one, it's okay. So the same thing, right? But in the different form. So a nurse is caring for a couple of patients. We have given you diagnosis and the treatment. Which of the following position and description need to be questioned? So patient is in certain position, I've described it, and then they have certain diagnosis, the same thing. So in a fowler position, what is a fowler position? You have to know what a fowler position is. That means the head of the bed is elevated. That is what is a fowler. But true fowler is 40, um, is usually 45 to 60. Okay, so this is true fowler. So you have to know the true fowler and you can deduce it from semi fowler and high fowler. So 45 to 60 is a true fowler. And yes, patients who had abdominal surgery, you don't want them to use the muscles in the abdomen. So you raise the head of the bed, not the patient head, but raise the head of the bed uh, to keep them a little bit slant and they can, they can help with breathing. So this is correct. We don't need to uh, question it. A semi fowler position um, is very important. This is very accurate. So you got to make sure you know it. Semi fowler position, the head of the bed is fine, but it's not 35, it's 30 degrees. And you use it for brain uh, monitoring of um, anybody who had brain surgery, or you're monitoring the ICP or somebody who is feeding. You want the blood to drain down to decrease ICP. So it's 30 degrees. It shouldn't go past 30 degrees. And the way I remember is it's Fowler. The IS Fowler is 60. And therefore, semi fowler should be 30. Okay. So I do the 30, 60, 90 rule, basically. So fowler is 60, semi fowler is 30. Therefore, you expect high fowler to be 90. And that's the next question. So this one, the two, the treatment is fine. ICP monitoring and feeding, but the, the 35 is wrong. The fowler, high fowler is 90 degrees. So this is wrong. And of course, respiratory distress. If you have a patient who is having respiratory distress, the first thing you should do is keep them in a high follow position. Any priority patient you see who is in respiratory distress, the, the most minimal thing you can do to help even before oxygen, head up 90 degrees, our follow position. Before even you put oxygen on them, that will help them uh, with breathing. So. Um, this patient, we need to intervene, and this patient, we need to intervene because of their degrees. The tatami position in the supine with the knee and hip flexed. Okay, so that is the, we already saw that. That is the right description. So they lay in the supine, you flex the knee and the hip, but we don't use it for enema. I mean, maybe somebody would do, but that's not the right position to do enema. You want them to retain the enema. They can do that, but... In, 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 in books, don't, don't choose that. So you have to lay, enema is usually given when the patient on the lateral uh, uh, position. So you put it on the lateral position and then you insect the enema. So this is, we got to intervene. So those are the, um, the, the, the answers for that question.
And then I changed the flavor. Like I try to be like an examiner as much as possible, you know, so that I can show you guys different ways they can trick you. Not tricking, but like keep you thinking. So you got to have your guard on. You know all the possible ways the examiner will bring these questions to you. Um, a nurse is caring for a couple of patients. Which of the following position need priority intervention? So this is now a priority question. And also a SATA, like I've been doing, puts uh, select all that apply in the form of a, a prioritization question. So you can master them. You, you're not afraid of them anymore. So there's a problem or a procedure, and then the patient is in certain position. Okay. So um, when somebody is doing paracentesis, what position should they be? They should not be in semi which is 30 degrees. They have to sit upright, 90 degrees, so that you don't injure the bladder. So it's because of the bladder. So 90 degrees. So this position is wrong. Um, so this patient needs priority intervention. Air embolism. Somebody had air embolism. Probably you pull in a catheter, air rushes in. It goes to the right, ventu uh, right atrium, to the ventricle. You go to the lung and the patient will have air embolism and they will die. The first thing you, you do is put their head down. So they go in the trandelabra position and they lay on the left side, left, okay, lateral T uh, trandelabra, so that the, uh, um, the right atrium will be above. If the right atrium is down, more air goes in and then the patient die. So the, this is partially correct. So Andelabeck is fine, but this is left-sided. So the patient has to lay on the left. So I need to intervene. Chest tube insertion. So if somebody is putting a chest tube in, what position should the patient lay? They lay in the supine position and the, their arm that is on the side of the injury will be above their head. So this is right. So this is right. Yeah. A liver biopsy. So somebody is going to have a liver biopsy. Most of the time when they do it, patient is going to be in the supine position for the procedure. For the procedure, they lay on their back. So this is wrong. So this has to be supine. So we got to intervene. So we got to intervene um, for that one. Liver biopsy, post. So after they had the surgery, after they had the biopsy, you want to prevent hemorrhage as much as possible. So you let you let them lay on the side where the liver is. The liver is on the right side. Therefore, they lay on the right lateral position. So left, this is bad. If you check my prioritization question with the bleeding, this is one of the questions they like asking on liver biopsy. So left-sided lay, is inappropriate. Therefore, we need to intervene. Kidney biopsy. Your kidney is in the retroperitoneal position, so it's on your back. So when they're doing the biopsy, they will put you on your in the prone position. But after the procedure, you have to lay put pressure on the kidney, so you lay on your back. So this one is right. So those are the um the um. Those are the wrong answers and the right answers. So one, two, four, and five are the one we have to um, intervene as soon as possible to avoid any complication. So this is the way I think I can teach you guys. I'm sorry, but if it's raw, but this is the way I want it to be. I think you see it much better with this information. Now I change the flavor. You have seen this question before. They won't tell you the asking you about position or um, a fundamental questions, but they will give it to you say, hey, this patient has this, which is what you do, intervention. But this is where they, it's coming from. Like I keep on saying, medicine is interconnected. It's not isolated phenomenon. So let's see what I'm talking about. So you have a, a nurse is caring for a couple of patients. Which of the following position need priority interventions? Select all that apply. So we have a, a, a diagnosis. They're going through a problem. Which position will you put, put them? Well, in a tough, which is um, the theology of Fowler, uh, when they go in teach spell, basically a decreased return of flu, uh, blood into the, the heart, 
then they will get into trouble. They become hypoxic. They become more cyanotic. So the best way to prevent that is to keep the kid in the knee to chest position. So this is the right treatment um, to ensure that more blood return and that will help with the tit spell. Um, number two, epiglottitis. So patient who is having this problem, you know the position they're going to be. There is an airway problem. It's a B-sharp moment. They're going to have an airway issue in order to prevent that they themselves naturally will put themselves in a tripod position. And what does that mean? They sit in the chair and they lean forward and they put their hands on their knee. So you have to know it. Sit in the chair, lean forward, put your hand in your knees to support your body. So that is the tripod position. So that's what they do, epiglottitis. So this is right. This is the right treatment the patient has to be in in order to ensure um, that they don't get in trouble. Rheumatoid arthritis, you may have seen this, they, they can ask you, because this is very important. These patients will develop contraction and then uh, their range of motion will decrease and they have stiffness in the morning when they wake up. So the one treatment you tell them is when you go to bed, make sure your bed is flat and stiff mattress. You make sure that you don't burn the, the mattress is not like that weak that you can go inside and I mean a change in shape based on your body. No, flat, neutral position as much as possible, and then they can wake up and be able, their joints will be able to move easily. This is very very key for rheumatoid arthritis. You need to keep them in the supine, in a neutral position, and make sure their mattress is flat and hard, no soft mattress. This is key, and I want you to get that in case you get that question. It's a testable con uh, question they like asking in, in a rheumatoid patient because you want to prevent uh, mobility of their problem. So if you tell them to lay in supine in a neutral position on a hard mattress, that is golden. So this patient is good. Uh, number four, air embolism prevention. This is not treatment. In order to prevent hair from traveling into the um, in the airway and the heart, is to keep the patient in the supine when you pull in IV because if they escape, it can become a problem. So this is right. Total hip replacement. Number one or two things you have to do is to prevent the two hip from coming together and prevent flexion. And so we put what we prevent adduction okay so we prevent adduction so i usually when i'm medical school the way i remember is when you had is adduction we want to do subtraction so a b adduction so you will putting an adductor wedge in that means you bring in the <laughs> um two Hips together, you want to do abductor, ABD, abductor, abductor. So abductor wedge away from each other. So this is wrong regarding to thing. Cord prolapse, yeah. When a patient is prolapsing and there's a cord, the first easy maneuver you can do is to put a lady, a woman, and the mother in the knee to chest uh, position, and that will allow the cord to go in into the uh, uterus more rather than coming out, continuing to prolapse. So this is the right position to keep the patient in. One sec once again, this is the way I can present this information in a lively, maybe entertaining way, um, but it's principle, it follow logic, um, is basically it makes sense, um, but there's no way you can you, you 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 don't memorize it. Think about the situation, but no certain fact. You see, I'm using the underlying uh, con problem, the pathophysiology, to tell you that this is where the patient should lay. Everything come together in a whole. So this is the way I can present it to you guys. Um, thank you for your time. Thank you for listening. Um, and all the best of luck in your exams.